I'm Sean Cole, this is The Sim Pit, and a while ago I did two different shows that actually prompted or were the creation of today's show here today. The first was that shootout, the $6,000 ultimate setup versus a $200 setup. Well, the results were predictable, but it was still fun nonetheless. The other was my recent review of the Thrustmaster TGT2 steering wheel. This was a blast from the past of technology and it reminded me that a belt drive wheel still feels good after testing dozens of high-end direct drive steering wheels. All of this was the creation of today's show that I will call Battle of the Fives. In one corner, we have the champion, the longtime standard that is the Thrustmaster TGT2 base, coming in at a hair under six newton meters of belt driven power in a plastic case with a not so quick release wheel rim and costing $500. And in the other corner, the Challenger, the new and slimmer all metal direct drive Moza R5 base. It puts out 5.5 newton meters of power and will set you back $350. After that review, I really did want to know the difference in feel and more importantly in lap times between those two different types of wheels. It was just a matter of finding two of similar quality and strength. Then we've got these two right here, which are pretty even in strength and quality. And there we have our shootout. For this review, I really am going to focus on the bases themselves since both can be purchased on their own. We're going to take everything else out of the equation for this shootout. I'm also using the same pedals for each wheel, my Rickmotec GT3 Pro pedals. In our last shootout, I learned that the pedals made as much of a difference as the steering wheel itself, so for today's shootout, we are going to focus on just the bases. Now, I took the exact same approach as before. I got very warmed up with each combination, got to the point where I was running very fast laps, and then backed it down to 95% for my 10 lap time run. I started out with the Moza Racing R5 base and the ES wheel rim at Sebring in the Porsche 911 RSR. The wheel is smooth, it is fast turning, and is very easy to drive with confidence. Without pushing too hard, I could run fairly consistent laps without any major mistakes. It was exactly what I wanted to see in an endurance type pace, and the lap times came in at about mid to upper 59s for the most part. Then I switched over to the Thrustmaster TGT2 steering wheel and headed out on track once again and I was immediately blown away at how similar the wheels feel. The power was almost identical. It was also very smooth and very fast turning and I was able to drive with the same level of determination without putting the car at risk. I'm not going to say that everything was identical between the two wheels and feel. The Thrustmaster felt a bit more springy if I could use a word to describe the difference but the results felt identical. My average lap times were again in the mid to high 59s for the most part, and it would come down to the math to pick a winner here. For me to analyze the data from these runs, I would take the 10 lap run, I would drop the fastest and the slowest lap time from the group, and I would only count those eight average laps. For the Moza R5 wheel, we had an average lap time of 159.744, with a lap differential of 0.833. For the Thrustmaster TGT2, we had an average lap time of 159.838, which was only one tenth of a second slower with an almost identical differentiation. Wow, that was close. If it had been an eight lap race, which ends up being nearly 20 minutes long, the Moza wheelbase won by only one second. And with a lap time differentiation of 0.830, that is within the margins of error. This was a virtual tie. So I then changed things over back to the Lotus 49 at Watkins Glen where there'd be no hiding behind the high tech driving aids of the car. This would be the opposite end of the spectrum for testing these bases. I once again started with the Moza setup and proceeded on track. Despite being warmed up and ready to go, Despite this wheel giving me confidence when driving, the Lotus removes both of those advantages right away. The Lotus will keep you on your toes and making small saves is a normal occurrence. The Moza wheel felt much lighter in force feedback with this car compared to the Porsche, but did maintain the speed and smoothness as before. I actually surprised myself with how comfortably I was able to drive and my lap times came in around 47s or so. Switching back to the Thrustmaster TGT2, I was once again shocked at how similar the power and overall feel was. 
In the end, to describe that springy feeling, I think it was that the TGT2 might have a similar power level, but might have less drag when reversing direction. It's really hard to tell, especially when the results feel the same. The 10 lap run was played with similar moments that made you pucker a little bit, but nothing that caused total panic or failure. Once again, certain consistency was easy to achieve, and once again, our lap times hovered in the high 46s or low 47s. After dropping our fastest and slowest times from each run, we can see that the Moza R5 base was averaging lap times of 147.11 with a lap time deviation of 0.585. The Thrustmaster TGT2 came in with an average of 147.06 and a deviation of 0.619. That is as close as it gets with a very challenging car. If this had been an 8 lap race, which would have been nearly 18 minutes long, the difference at the line would be only 0.094 in favor of the Thrustmaster. That is a photo finish. So those results were extremely eye-opening to me. Yes, there is a difference in the way these wheels feel. Yes, there is a difference in the overall force feedback and the way it's delivered to the user through the steering wheel and the base. However, the results were nearly identical. It was really hard to see much of a difference, to feel a significant difference between each of these. And when you look at the lap times, you could tell they had the exact same on-track capability. The Moza did feel a little bit stronger overall, and the Thrustmaster felt a bit quicker in counter-rotation. But it is so hard to tell. Overall, the Thrustmaster setup from mount to rim had a tiny bit more flex in the system than the Moza. So if I had to pick one, which one would I choose? I think I would give a slight edge to the Moza R5 base, and that being based on the fact that it is significantly less expensive for, as you can see, the exact same results. Now, with that said, if you're really into Gran Turismo and you also run on the PlayStation, then it's really hard to beat the Thrustmaster TGT2 performance when it comes to the in-game enhanced vibration that you're gonna get, and therefore, for those drivers, I would definitely pick the Thrustmaster wheel. One advantage of using the same car, track, conditions, and even the setup is the fact that we can create a little bit of a lower leaderboard. We can see where one wheelbase stacks up against another over time as we do more shootouts. The only downside is that iRacing does make changes to the sim. They'll make changes to tire model, to grip levels of track, or even the layout as they did with Sebring since our last test. However, with that said, we can still see how things size up. Looking at Sebring and the Porsche results, we can see that money still wins the battle, but not by as much as you would think. Switching over Watkins Glen and the Lotus, it's still big money on top with a reversal in the number two position with the $200 budget setup still way off the pace in both categories. So I hope you've enjoyed this shootout, probably the more important of the two that we've done so far. I'm not sure we actually answered the question, belt drive versus direct drive. Maybe it put more focus on Newton meters themselves, and maybe that'll be the product of the next version that we do. If you have an idea of a shootout that you'd like to see, be sure to put it in the comments below, or send me an email at sean at thesimpit.com. I'd like to invite you to watch us at Simpit Live on Twitch. Friday, January 6th, we're going to start that show back up every Friday talking sim racing, sim racing news, and everything that you would like to talk about as a sim racing hobbyist. Thank you for watching. Be sure to thumbs up if you enjoyed the show. Be sure to subscribe to the channel so you can find out when our next one comes out. This is The Sim Pit. I'm Sean Cole, and I'll see you on the track.